The market pops, drops, and chops as we wait for the Fed. This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so we didn't get a whole lot of information yesterday as the market did pop a little bit higher before dropping in the morning session and then chopping pretty much the rest of the day right around the point of control. Everyone is waiting for a highly anticipated Fed meeting to see what they say and how the market will react. I'll get into all that in just one second. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down our S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, so even in these choppy markets, there are trades to be made. PT, who is a wizard trader, an absolute master, had the guys lined up perfectly today to take some money off that drop, and they did very well. If you're interested in that, stay tuned for later in the video. For now, let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one-hour futures chart. As you can see, not a whole lot happened. We did push up and made a nominal new high here and then really sold off in the morning session for a couple hours, then chopped around in this area for the rest of the day. So not a whole lot of information. We did come down into this circle wave for support, but it is possible that with this little pop high, even though it's a nominal high, you could call it wave five of three to complete, and we could be looking for this bigger four down. So still unclear of the exact path since this high wasn't what you would look for in a wave five. You'd look for that to push up to like 3940 or so. And since we didn't get that, could just be an ABC expanded flat playing out where we're in wave a mini wave four right here, just a little tiny one and get a wave five down to complete. And which wave four we could be in or even wave B will just depend on how the market plays out from here. So our paths that we're tracking at the moment, okay, are potentially that this is an A, B, C, okay, down into this wave four area, this uh, 3817 to 3785 area for this bigger wave four that would lead to a wave five up towards 3985. So that is a potential path that we are looking at here. Now, the reason I did lead with this path is if you look on the chart, it was a pretty sharp sell off and it kind of looks like the beginning or the makings of a C wave where we're bouncing in four of that C wave and we get five down. So essentially you would look at something like this move down being one, two, three, four, five to complete down into that perfect support zone and then get at wave five back up that we would be looking for. So that's why we led with that as the primary potential path moving forward. But it's not a primary path that I'm willing to bet a whole bunch of money on, especially right before the Fed, where we know a lot of volatility can happen and the market can jump pretty strongly in either direction. So if that's not the case, there are a couple of other options. It's possible we hold this low in this smaller degree wave four and push up towards that 3940 area. And the other major possibility, guys, is that we are topping or half topped here. And we're starting a B wave down where we'd get an A, B, C down into this 3715 to 3664 area. And then from there, we would look for a strong rally higher in C up towards the 4200 area where then we would look for a major sell off at that point. So those are the three paths we're tracking. Remember, we have the potential to pull back into that 3817 to 3785 support zone for this bracketed wave four, then get the wave five push higher towards 3985 to 4000. We have the potential for this circle four to hold in this area and then push up towards about 3920 before we see another pullback and push higher. I don't think that one's going to play out, especially given this nominal new high and how low we've gotten. And then finally, we do have the ABC here down into the uh, 3715 to 3665 region, where we'd look for a C wave rally off of that pullback. Okay, guys, over on the NASDAQ, we have a slightly different count on the NASDAQ as the rally portion of the NASDAQ has not been as strong as the rally portion of the ES, where they came out and took out these highs. So in the NASDAQ, we're tracking this C wave up towards the 12177 to 12470 areas, in which case you would have this one, two, three. Now, this wave four here okay, is testing the limits of what a wave four can be. It hasn't invalidated by moving into wave one territory, but it has reached just past the 50% retrace. And anytime we break a 50% retrace on a wave four, it does make it less likely to play out. So it is possible that this was all of wave one of C up here where the circle three is, and we get a wave two down and then wave three of C higher. But as it stands right now, we have a wave four of C looking for a wave five higher. Now we complete one, then you get two, three, four, Five up to that 12,470 region to complete that wave C. Okay, so that other option that we just looked at would be where. 
this is one, we get two down, and then three, four, five, up to 12, 470 uh, for that C wave to play out. And then the final and much less likely option, guys, is that we did complete a diagonal up for the NASDAQ to complete a wave one, and this pullback was a wave two, and we're building a wave one of three, so we're building a one, two, one, two setup. And what that would look like is very similar to what we're talking about with the C wave. We won't know the difference until we get a little further along if it plays out, where that up is one, we got two down, then you got one of three, two of three, and then you get three, four, five of three that would come up into this same type of area. And if we get that, okay, then the pullback is what's going to tell the story. So if this is truly an A wave, you'll get a very deep B wave pullback and then C higher. And if it is a uh, wave C, or I'm sorry, if it's a wave three, then you would get a shallower pullback for a wave four and then a wave five higher from there. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link and it will take you right over to the website. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible rooms and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there, become part of our trading team, and make sure you love it before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get... Every, you get real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, as well as all of your Elliott Wave questions answered. We trade the SPY and the QQQ, and we swing trade, which means all of our trades can last anywhere from a few days to a few months, so we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room does. However, if you are interested in day trading as well as individual stocks, you need to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as individual stocks, day trading, and PT's reduced risk binary method that just crushes the market. He gets you in at a cheap cost and get you big multiples on your money, and it's based on how he structures the trade. It's very unique and something you kind of have to see to fully understand, which is another reason we give you that seven-day free trial so that you can make sure you love it. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account, trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large account, averaging 3 to 4% gains per week. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can make some money together. All right, key takeaways for today, guys. We kept it pretty simple today because the Fed is tomorrow, and we're going to see some uh, moving, heavy moving and volatility once the Fed meeting starts. So we'll want to see exactly what the market has planned for us. But we have our support levels and we have our key levels, and that's really what it's all about. Looking for that 38.17 to 37.85 support area to hold this wave four, then a push higher towards 38, 39.85 to 4K. Or if they break that support, we're looking for a bigger move down in wave B towards 37.15 to 36.65, and then a rally higher in C from there. Over on the NASDAQ, same type of situation where we're kind of uh, keeping it simple right now and waiting for the Fed to give us a little bit more information so we can have uh, a better idea of exactly where we are in the count. The wave four, as we said, is testing limits, but we could get a wave five push up toward 11.7 to 11.800, uh, or we could get a deeper pullback for a wave two in the uh, 11, 11, 11,001, 11 area, and then a push higher. But ultimately, we're looking for this C wave to continue to play out toward 12,177 to 12,470. Guys, that is the market update for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.